Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's do an example of how to calculate the apparent power. Well, it's done by calculating the average power and then just taking this portion of it because that portion of it is the apparent power. We ignore the part right here. We have the cosine of the phase difference between the voltage and the current. So here we have a simple circuit that we've seen before. We have a voltage supply, maximum voltage of 5 volts with a phase angle of 30 degrees. We have a resistor and we have a capacitor together give us an impedance of 4 minus J2 and we can convert that to the amplitude or magnitude and phase angle format of the impedance. Then to calculate the current we take the voltage divided by the impedance so there's the voltage divided by the impedance and that gives us a current with a maximum value of 1.118 amps with a phase angle of 57, 56.57 degrees. Notice that the current leads to voltage, which is what you expect in a capacitive circuit. The phase angle for the current, 56.57 degrees. The phase angle for the voltage, 30 degrees. So the difference of the phase angle would be a negative 26.57 degrees because the current leads to voltage. So now we're going to calculate the average power, realizing that this portion right here is called the apparent power. Now it's a little bit tricky still as to, under to understand what that really is. So let's go ahead and plug in what we have. The average power is equal to one half times the maximum voltage of 5 volts, the maximum current of 1.118 amps, times the cosine of 30 degrees minus 56.57 degrees. So the power, the average power is therefore equal to, let's calculate this, so you have 2.5 times 1.118, that's 2.795, 2.795, we're not going to put units on that yet, times the cosine of a minus 26.57 degrees. So we take the cosine of that, so 26.565 actually. Uh, let's take the cosine of that, that gives us 0 0.8944. So that would be power average is equal to 2.795 and the cosine of that would be equal to 0 0.8944 and when you multiply that together you get the average power to be equal to 2.5 watts and of course that's what you expect remember we got that before and the units indeed are watts but this portion right here is considered the apparent power. So the apparent power, P apparent, is equal to 2.795, but instead of writing watts, we write a volt amperes. Actually, I was going to write in the wrong order, so we write this as volt amperes, that means volt times amps, and that is the proper unit for apparent power. Now, what is the apparent power? Well, the apparent power is simply this portion of that equation. It's simply a mathematical thing. It's not a real thing. It's basically the average power with the phase angle of zero. And of course, in the circuit, the phase angle isn't zero, so it doesn't really represent a real thing. So the best thing to think about it, it's simply this portion of that equation. It is the average power with the phase angle set equal to zero, but if you then take the cosine of the actual phase angle times the apparent power, you get the average power. So it's not so much that it's a real thing, it's just simply a portion of an equation that's been given a special name, the apparent power. That is the maximum power that the circuit can deliver if there was a zero phase angle. That might be even a better way to think about it. The maximum power that could be delivered by the circuit if the phase angle of the circuit was set equal to zero, that's called the apparent power. And that's how it's done.